Newcastle United are back in the big time. The Magpies have qualified for the Champions League in the first time in 20 years. And people to say, oh, it's just down to the Saudi money. But I am here to tell you exactly why those people are wrong. And here to help me do it is my good friend, Sunny, that sports guy. The link to his page is in the description to this video. So please head over there and drop him a subscribe. Sunny, as a Man United fan, Newcastle United have pretty much been your closest contenders this yeah. season, the way it's panned out. <laughs> just how good have they been and just how far ahead of schedule are Newcastle this season? They have been ridiculous. Listen, I love watching Harry Potter films growing up and Lupin always said one thing, like, ridiculous. That's exactly what they've been. Ridiculous. Unbelievable season and they are so far ahead of schedule. No one. And if you had them finishing Champions League, then please predict my future and Joey's. And please let us know if he's going to be in misfits. But anyway, <laughs> nobody saw Newcastle finishing top four. I don't care what anyone says. Nobody. Max, maybe fifth, sixth. The fact that they have made Champions League in their first, I'd say, proper season under Eddie Howe. What a season they've had. They even made the League Cup final as well. Yes, they didn't win, but they hadn't made a final in years. Ahead of schedule. Things are looking rosy up in the northeast. Listen, they might even do a goal for the way it's going. Santi Munez might come back as well. I don't think Santiago will get in that team now. <laughs> I, I think I think have. Wilson and Isaac are keeping him on the bench, mate. <laughs> Unbelievable. Which is a good job because, like I said, to you, his lungs are falling to pieces. I don't think he's coping that high pressing team. So, but I mean, you mentioned Eddie Howe there. The mm. Eddie Howe effect has been unbelievable. Eddie Howe took over Newcastle November the 9th and they were in 19th mm. in the league table without a win in their opening 11 matches. Now, Eddie Howe came in and turned the club around and not only did they end up surviving the drop, they were a win off of having a top 10 finish that season. Mm -hmm. They did make mm -hmm. big signings. Yeah, you look at the likes of Trippier coming in, Dan Byrne, obviously most notable, Bruno Guimaraes for 40 odd million. And the thing is, like I look at it, yeah, and I go, 40 million for the biggest signing. That's not actually a signing that I would go, oh, it's unrealistic, completely unrealistic that a Premier League team that aren't even in the top 10 could make. I think that maybe from a personal aspect, yeah, <laughs> without the lure of the looming success that we anticipate Newcastle having ahead of mm -hmm. them, yes, maybe they wouldn't have been able to tie those players into contracts, okay? But I don't think it's mad to say that an Everton could have signed those players. You know, a West Ham could have signed those players. 40 mil, it's a lot of money. I understand it's a lot of money. But it's not money that only the so-called big six could spend. You know, you look at Everton, for example. They spent 45 mil on Gilfie Sigurdsson. Mm. You know, what's happened to him? No, one, no one's heard of Gilfie Sigurdsson in ages, have they? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Chelsea, they spent 47 million on Sterling this season. Spurs spent 50 million on Richarlison. So it's not a thing of, oh, you spend the money and, and, and you know, you'll work your way up the league. Because I'll tell you one thing. If Newcastle had spent that money on Sigurdsson, on Richarlison, I don't think they would have been catapulted up the league. So, yes, money has been spent. Money's been spent at a lot of clubs. It's been spent wisely at Newcastle. Exactly. You could say, yeah, they're signings from the first season. But you look at the next season, you know, they've brought in Botman, Pope, Anthony Gordon, who, you know, for my money, Anthony Gordon hasn't done very well, but we'll give him till next yeah. season. He's a young player. Isaac, most Ooh. notably, okay? And he did come in for a hefty price. They only spent... Less than a million, 900,000 more than Forrest. Mm. They spent less than Arsenal, mm. Chelsea, Man United. Maybe surprisingly, they spent less than West Ham. So would you agree with me that it doesn't come down at this point right now in time to spending money why Newcastle have got it? 100% agree with you, Joey, because like you said, the players you've mentioned, fine, other than Isak, they're pretty reasonable priced players. Again, it's how you spend it, not what you have. You know, as a Man United fan speaking on this, we have a ridiculous net spend since Guardiola's been in charge. Something like nearly a billion. Man City have had a fraction of that. They've won five Premier League titles, numerous trophies. It's how you spend it. They've been very, very smart. The only transfer, I'd say, since this whole Newcastle project has started that has really been a dud is probably Chris Wood. He was bought for some like 20-odd mil. Mm. I think he got something like two goals for them. He went to Forest, obviously, in January. He wasn't a success. Everyone else, unbelievable. You say he wasn't a success. Who did they bring him in off? Burnley. Who went down? Burnley. That's one relegation spot that, yes, the way it transpired, it didn't matter to Newcastle who went down because there was nine teams below them in the end. But they didn't know that when they bought mm. Chris Wood. And they were directly taking a player who was getting goals for Burnley, mm. albeit maybe, what, a one in four record, but down at a, you know, a relegation candidate team, that's not too bad. They took one of their goal scorers off of them. 
which, yeah, all right, it's the dark arts of football and may, may, maybe it's a little bit shady, but I'm a Chelsea fan, so I know all about these sort of things. They took him off of Burnley and Burnley went down. So ultimately, you could sort of say, was it a flop? You know, the only thing is, what did they spend on him? 30 mil? Around that 25 they, mil. They ain't going to recoup that for Chris Wood, no, surely. No, no, they're not. But at the time, you're probably thinking wasn't the best. But the fact that that's an anomaly, Joey. Yeah. Everyone else has been a success. There has been more hits than misses. More hits than misses. Even, right? So this is where the money thing kind of is irrelevant because Eddie Howe's done such a good job. Joel Linton, he came in as an attacker, as a striker. Eddie Howe, what did he do? Put him in the midfield. And he's been absolutely amazing. What does that come down to? It doesn't come down to money. That comes down to coaching now. And you say that about coaching now, sir. Joe Linton's not the only one. Mm. We could name loads of names. Fabian Shaw, what's happened to him? Almiron. Okay, Ooh. Callum Wilson, yeah, he was a talent at Bournemouth. I agree but with you. He's gone to the next level yeah. under Eddie Howe. Eddie Howe is transforming players that were already there, already in and around that system. Mm -hmm. And Eddie Howe's took them to the next level. And like earlier on, right, we were saying about the fact that obviously West Ham has spent more than Newcastle. This is the reason why I don't think you can put it down to the money. Going into this season, you would have looked at West Ham's team that finished what? around 8th, 7th mm -hmm. or 8th, I think it was 7th in the Premier League last season, you'd have looked at that team, and I reckon pound for pound you'd have gone, that team's got more about it than the Newcastle team. Some might disagree, mm. some might agree, but Depends, before the yeah. signings of Isaac, before the signings of a lot of these players, mm -hmm. you'd have looked at that West Ham team and gone, it's got more about it, if not just as much. And if West Ham, without any takeover, without all that sort of ridiculous investment that is to come, finished third in the Ooh. Premier League this season, we would be going mental about it. Mm. We'd have been raving about it. The reason people aren't as much is because we had all prepared ourselves for what is to come in the future, yeah? A lot of people, including myself, didn't live through that Blackburn era. A lot of people, um, even the younger viewers, wouldn't have really known Chelsea before Abramovich mm. came in. Man City is the one that everyone saw and everyone saw the way it happened. So we all almost look at that and we think oh okay we sort of know what's to come and that's why maybe we're not singing newcastle's mm -hmm. plaudits as much as we should be but i'm telling you now in my opinion this does not come down to the money because clubs have spent just as much as newcastle and haven't got anywhere near what newcastle have done this season i admit the money will play a massive factor mm, going agreed. forward agreed. It, will, it will play a factor in the sustainability of what they do but this season, as a one-off season, I don't believe that the money is what has, what has put Newcastle at this point. What I would like to know from you, in your opinion, how do they cope with European football next season? Ooh, they need a bigger squad, that's for sure. Because although they do have a good squad, it's not big enough. They need experience as well, because if you look at their squad, the only real proven player at European level is probably Trippier. Yeah. Maybe Isak, but let's be fair, Isak, when he was at Dortmund and Real Sociedad, he was a wonder kid. He wasn't really a proven striker. Now he's getting to that level where he can prove himself as being a top 10 striker in the world. Callum Wilson, again, like you said, came from Bournemouth. These are players that they haven't hit that level yet. Yes, they can potentially elevate themselves there, but they're not at that level yet. So they need experience right now. They don't want to go for the Divas. Now, I saw an article how they were linked to Neymar. It's not going to happen, though. All that, do, you know, do you know what? That sort of stuff annoys me, like, because it's just clickbait. And it's just like, mm. we ain't even clickbait for me because I'm not going to even click on it. It's like, oh, so-and-so Chelsea are interested in sign. Chelsea are going to table an £80 million pound bid for Vlahovic. I'll tell you now, Vlahovic ain't coming Chelsea. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they say about Newcastle. Newcastle will think about Neymar. No, they're not. They're not thinking about Neymar because they've got more brains. You exactly. know what? If you link Chelsea with Neymar, admittedly, I'd be like, yeah, maybe we are, you know what I mean? Bowley and whatever. But I don't think Newcastle are thinking about that. I don't mm. think Newcastle are on that sort of wavelength. I think Newcastle, yes, they've got absolute abundance of riches. I think they're very clever in the way that club's being run. And we speak about European football. That crowd. The Ooh. Geordies the Geordies are a different breed <laughs> of people. I love the Geordies, by the way. I've been to Newcastle and it's one of the most like welcoming places I've been to sort of thing. Normally, like I went to Liverpool once, right? And at the bar, like the music playing and whatever. Yeah, can I, can I get a Moretti, please? What's that? Thinking, I don't want to say it too loudly because the second they hear me speak, they're going to think, hey, like whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whereas the fellas I met up in Newcastle, the blokes, they're very like inviting, mm. very warming, good people. The Geordies, I'm not, I'm not saying the Scousers aren't, but I'm just saying the Geordies are good people and 
they get behind their team. In London, yeah, you've got so many different clubs you can support. Mm. If you're up in Newcastle, you're supporting Newcastle. One million You're supporting the team. They have got a ridiculous fan base. And I'll tell you what, on the European nights, that is going to be a 12th man. Mm. They'll make it out of the group and they'll probably get a... F- I'd say they'll probably get through a few rounds of those knockout you stages. You think they'll get to the quarterfinals? I think they'll get to the quarterfinals, yeah. Depending, yeah. Listen, luck of the draw, you've always got to rely on a little bit of luck. Any team needs a little bit of luck. Just ask me with Chelsea 2012 <laughs> and, and, you know, obviously the win against Manchester City coming up against the side of European bottle jobs in the final. But, and this won't age well, age like milk. Um, but, you know, I think that'd be a 12th man. I think they'll get through maybe one, maybe two of the knockout rounds. I do think ultimately they'll come away falling just short to one of the European powerhouses, but albeit with their heads held high. How do you think they'll do European football next season? I I think they'll get out of the group because like you've just said, Joey, that crowd is unbelievable. Now, you know, Geordie's unbelievable. Geordie Shaw, why I? I don't know how you do the accent, but anyway, you had that. Why I? Why I? Geordie's me? Is Kenny Kenny nice up in Newcastle? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> He's clearly been Newcastle either way. But the thing is, the crowd's amazing. We know this. They were always passionate fans. That They went through thick and thin when the whole Mike Ashley thing was going on. They'd always be protesting. They'd still fill out St. James's Park. Even when they're in the championship, they still have, what, 40,000 there? Mm. Unbelievable. But I think the biggest reason why I think they'll do well is that manager. Eddie Howe is not going anywhere. With all due respect to Eddie Howe, he's a great manager, but he's at a club now which is big. It's going to have a lot of potential a Chelsea, a Spurs, a Man United, a Man City, a Liverpool, they're not going to be able to get Eddie Howe. The only place Eddie Howe goes to is the England job. And let's be honest, that job isn't going to be free anytime soon. So the manager's going to stay. And that's a key thing. Stability has always been a very key thing in football, especially at a big club. You look at Wenger, you look at Fergie. I'm not saying Eddie Howe's any of those managers, even Pep right now. But stability is a big reason why these clubs do well, because they stuck with the manager instead of mm. getting rid of them. There was a chance in 1989, I'm pretty sure we played Forrest in the cup. Obviously, I wasn't born then, but Fergie was about to get sacked if he didn't beat Forrest. What happened? He won. As I say, the rest is history. For my sins, I am a listener of TalkSport. <laughs> Obviously, Simon Jordan and Jim White, and they put on a good show. And, and, and Simon Jordan, one of the things that he said is he thinks that Eddie Howe is opening couple of chapters in this Newcastle story yeah. but as much as he wishes him well he doesn't see it being Eddie Howe that ultimately takes Newcastle to the next level and by that next level I obviously mean Premier League and Champions League title wins mm-hmm. okay we look at the Manchester City takeover you know started off with Mark Hughes you know he had what a season and a half maybe two seasons and and obviously that um that That's came true. to an end and they went for those European sort of names so a lot of people would sort of say, yeah, no, maybe not Eddie Howe. And the reason why some of the time we'd say that as well is, I know Sam Sam Allardyce made comments about, you know, the way that we look at British managers. And if his name was Sam Allardyce, we would look at it different and whatever. But ultimately, of recent time and of my lifetime track record, British managers haven't done anything amazing in comparison mm. to the foreign managers we've had over here. In my lifetime, I'd say I'm looking at Sir Bobby Robson, mm-hmm. Kevin Keegan, and for me to stand out, and probably just because of the age and because of the interest I had in football at the time, Harry Redner, already Eddie Howe's sort of writing his name in there as one of the one of the better ones of our lifetime, isn't he? One million percent. It's the reason why people are talking about how he should be taken over Southgate as England manager, because they saw him, what he done at Bournemouth, how he was so talented. Why would you take that though? Sorry to interrupt you, but you've said you've said about mm-hmm. the Southgate thing before. That for me is just like if I'm Eddie Howe, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm sitting there and like, yeah, yeah, flattered, national team manager. But like, fuck, am I can't kind of take the England job. I want day in, day out, on the training ground, with these players, able to bring in who I want. And do you know what the other thing is this year? They won't be trigger happy, that Newcastle mm-hmm. board. If they finish fifth next season, I don't think they're getting rid of Eddie Howe. I think they'll understand. And also, one thing is, when you take over a club with a disgruntled fan base, they're going to listen to that fan base. And I'll tell you what, them Geordies are loyal, man. Them Geordies aren't going to go against Eddie no, Howe no. if he doesn't get them top four next season because they'll see the bigger picture. Agreed. They would have been happy with a top 10 finish this season mm-hmm. just so long as the doom and gloom and the restraints and the penny pinching and all of that was mm-hmm. lifted from St. James's Park. The PIF, for whatever you think of them, have done that. Eddie Howe has done that. And all we can really do is sit back as football fans. We take the politics out of it. We take all of that out of it. Sit back as football fans and commend Newcastle for what an unbelievable job they have done this season. Newcastle fans, I want to hear from you lot. 
What do you think of next season? Do you think you'll have a run in the Champions League? Are you just happy to be there? Or are you looking to not only take part, but in Conor McGregor's words, take over? I want to know. Let me know in the comments. As soon as this video drops, I will be replying to every comment that gets put in there. So please, please, please do me a massive favor. Also, head over to Sani's channel. The link to his YouTube page is in the description of this video. Drop him a subscribe and I will see you all in the next one.